fellow kids. Welcome to real life. I hope you're doing just excellent. Slightly above mediocre would be acceptable. You miss, well, you didn't really miss anything, but I just spent the past 20 miles going at alleged fast speeds, having a good old time. So this is what I would say. The weather is awesome, which means today is Monday, but I said that yesterday. I actually went out and rode yesterday on Monday and the weather was just like today, 63, something like that. And I recorded it finally Friday and some Moto Monday stuff. But it hit me once again that the technical difficulties, my microphone wasn't working. So all that footage is garbage and gone, lost to time. So I'm out riding again, repeating Monday on Tuesday. And I'm going out for the same ride, basically, to record the final Friday again. Ooh, 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 <laughs> ooh. That freshly turned dirt looks so cool. Any hizzle, first things first, I'm gonna go to a meetup. It's not my meetup, it's a motorcycle meet hosted by Cycle Gear two weeks from today, which will be less than two weeks from when you see it. But that's gonna be March 14th at 5 p.m. at Cycle Gear in Lenexa, Kansas. I'll put that information in the description. But uh, to me, if I'm going to, uh, you're welcome obviously to join and you can see me there. And yeah, just giving you a heads up on that. So I have a really awesome photochromic visor shield that self tints basically. And it's very cool because it's nice and also because it's really hard to freaking get. I was so lucky and happy to have found this one when I did. It's also expensive. Anyhow, little sad story. Um, I took the pin lock out to try to clean it. And when I took the, you know, the anti-fog layer pin lock out from behind, it snapped. I can't point to it because this camera isn't working today. It worked yesterday. Um, it snapped one of the two white pin lock inserts inside the shield. So now I can't put the fog layer back in. It doesn't hold in there. So now I don't have any fog protection anymore, which is annoying because even on a nice day today, like today, when I'm sitting here talking, my visor is fogging up. So that sucks because you would effectively have to buy a new visor, which even if I could, which you can't, I wouldn't because it's expensive and not worth buying a new shield when the one pin's broken. The other option is just don't use the shield and go back to using a clear shield and a smoke shield, each with its own uh, fog insert, which I might have. I might have to buy fog inserts for those. There's no good singular option, just a little sad first world problem story, and that's that. The only other thing I think I talked about was I'm going on a retro video game tear. I've been plowing out some old original Xbox games that I've always wanted to play, and most of them you can't play on the current gen Xbox consoles. You have to have original hardware, which I don't have. So there's a lot of games I want to play that I can't, but happy story. I thought I'm just going to look up one really quick on the Xbox Marketplace. It's not like they're gonna have <gasps> Star Wars Attack of the Clones, yes! And they had it freaking digital download, properly ported and backwards compatible. It's like, yes! Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> Any hizzle, so I got the game for 10 bucks and I played the piss out of it for two days and it was very good, just that straight nostalgia. So good. I really want to play some other ones that I can't. Some other ones I want to play are, in fact, the one I want to play the most is Mech Assault 2 Lone Wolf. But you have to have an original Xbox and a copy of the game to play it because it's not backwards compatible. I don't think there's a working emulator to that game. A couple of the games I want to play are uh, the Transformer games, the War for Cybertron and, War and Fallout of Cybertron. I loved those when those came out. Those are for Xbox 360. I think there was a PC port, but if it's it's not mainline, it'd be hard to get if you could find it anyway. So games I want to play, but I can't. Kind of sad, whatever. But I did get one. One of those games I wanted to play was Star Wars Attack of the Clones. The reason that game is special is because I liked it as a kid, probably because it was the first video game I ever owned. Certainly first, you know, game I had on my first console. It wasn't even my console, our siblings shared it, but any hizzle. Very cool. Got a dope of nostalgia. I got a dope. I smoked a dope of nostalgia. Yeah, that's how smoking works, right? Oh yeah, here's the story. So yesterday I pulled over to save a dog, which now I don't have a thumbnail for that, so that's sad, but yesterday there was a dog on the side of the street, so I pulled over, went to it, but of course it just kind of ran away from me, and it was in the backyards-ish of some houses, so I just assumed it was near its owners, like, okay, you don't have a collar on, but presumably you live here, and the street you're on or next to is kind of slow, so you probably won't get hit, and I can't do anything at this point, so that kind of sucks, but try to save that dog. The day before at work, when I was driving, a dog wandered into the street, or was in the street, I should say, when I pulled in. I was like, okay, so I pulled over, got to that dog. She was nice, she would came up to me, she had a collar. I'm like, well, hi there, and I don't know where you belong, but not here in the street, so 
She had a caller and had a phone number on it, and called it, no one answered. Then a car came up the street and she said, then I asked her if she knows where the dog belongs. She goes, yeah, it's the neighbor's dog. The neighbor's house is right there. I was like, awesome. So I walked the dog to the neighbor's house, or I guess to the house, it wasn't my neighbor. Uh, walked into their house, I just wanted to get in front of her, but I couldn't because I couldn't without being mean, and now I get to commit a little bit of this, a little bit of this action. Uh, I knocked on the door, they didn't come, then the owner finally came around the house, I was like, yeah, that's my dog, she just she just does that, like, okay, cool, well, here she's returned, ka-chow, fix. And the day before that, on my way home from work, there was a dog in the street, much like yesterday, but this was a much faster street, it was a pug, and I saw a collar on it, but it was in the street, I was like, ah! So I was going by and I thought, I need to turn around and go for that dog. So I turned around, came back and I couldn't find the dog. I was like, well, ah, I don't know what happened to that dog. So the moral story is three dogs, one successful return, rescue, mission, whatever you want to call it. The other two, I got, I got one and a half dogs. First dog was a complete failure three days ago. Second dog, success. Yesterday dog, half a mark. I'm guessing the dog is okay. I feel okay about it. So that's a failure. Three dogs at best, 50% dogs returned that's a failing grade sad story and i recorded that yesterday with the third dog but of course that footage has gone to the ages and i'm just telling you that story and i'm driving on autopilot don't know where i'm going i just know that i really was having a good time 10 minutes ago going really not slow out in the country just fast i was going to the speed limit so fast we'll believe i was so fast on the speed limit i was obeying the law so hard Oh yeah, and yesterday I had washed my bike and cleaned it, and it was so beautiful. In fact, it's beautiful today, but yesterday I was showing off how clean it was and how it's not clean. It's so weird, like I put it underneath the bike cover, like last night, and I pulled it to cover off, and it's dusty. Like, how does that happen? I just cleaned it, covered it. Next day, take the cover off, it's got dust all over it, whatever. So I was like, ah, oh, it's not clean anymore. I mean, it's mostly clean, but... Clean enough for me to still be aroused because as a good vehicle when you have the right one i looked at it at the gas station when i was coming back to it i was like a damn i was like i want a girlfriend like that freaking every time i see it i'm like damn i want to ride that so yeah it's a good feeling to know that my bike is sexy as hell so damn hot god damn someone asked me the other day what i thought the most good looking bike is the Pentagali v4 i think is the most gorgeous looking bike ever but this one I think is number two. I don't know. Maybe, maybe another Ducati would be number two. But this thing is, if not, if not number two, is number three. This is one of the most sexy freaking bikes I've ever seen. And I'm not just saying it because it's good or I like it. I'm saying because it it's just how I think. I think so. And I asked myself the other day if I was gonna mod something on this bike after all the mods I've done, what would I change? What would I add or take? I know exactly what that'd be. It'd be carbon fiber wheels. Maybe they'd be painted so you wouldn't see that they're carbon fiber, but the point is they'd be lighter wheels and wow. Because I had carbon fiber wheels on a couple cars and it's so crazy the difference that makes. They just, they, they just boom, they spin faster. It's crazy and so, you know, having that on this bike would be a really pretty interesting improvement, you know. There aren't many ways you could improve this bike at this point if you don't know because it's been so long and I forgot. It's got a full uh, bigger air box. Uh, full new exhaust and slip on new tune I remember what it was like the first time I drove it after I had that change and you could just hear the the air like it was you could hear like you hear more air coming in I was like oh this is cool you could feel it five or ten percent yeah you could feel it. it was awesome carbon fiber wheels would be awesome I have no plans in doing it that's a lot of money for a little performance it's not worth it Go second gear. I was waiting for that. Or actually, I wasn't waiting for it. I should have expected it. So, someone who's smart can tell me what's going on there. Second gear will slip sometimes. I'll be in second. My foot hasn't touched the shifter, and blah, it'll, it'll drop from like uh, third down back into second. You see what happens? I'm in third, and blah, it just shifts down to second. Like, oh, that's not good. So, I don't know if that's a big problem. It's not a big enough problem for me to go, don't touch the motorcycle, but it sucks. It's probably the bike's biggest problem, honestly. At the gas station earlier today, I saw a guy on a 900 Tiger Triumph, so I went over and talked to him. Uh, he was a bunch of older guys making small talk, asking, hey, where are you riding today? He goes, just going home. I was like, okay, you're just riding today. Because I was kind of hoping, because he was on an adventure bike, that he was literally in the middle of a trip, and I could catch him and ask him about where he's from, where he's going, but that's okay. Any hizzle, I asked him, 
why he chose that bike and he said well I did have a BMW GS Adventure 2014 R1200 I was like aha that's my bike and I go so why did you switch to this one he goes because it's 100 pounds lighter and this one had good reviews so I was like yeah I said if I could do it again if I got a different adventure bike I would also have chosen a medium because I would love to have something lighter and if I did do it again I have no plans to I've, I've invested you know in my bike I want to use as much of it as I can but if I did it again I think an 890 Adventure R, the KTM mid-size bike would be really good. If not that, then the BMW mid-bike, but something lighter with slightly better economy. And yeah, it probably would work just great. Ooh, what's this? So I knew what it was right away when I saw the fender. Just couldn't say it out loud fast enough. Africa Twin. But where's the owner? The owner should be watching it. This is actually where I made it to yesterday. I spun around over here. I stopped here to think about where I was going to drive and I got off the bike. This is perfect. I got off the bike to like look at it and be like, yeah, damn. And now I could just actually end the video here because why not? And then you could look at it, even though, can you see that dust? Can you see that? Can you see how ruined everything is? This is the worst day of my life. But anyway, it's still very pretty. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to surprise myself with how hot it is. Ready me? Damn! Oh man, it's so freaking good looking. Yep, number two. This is number two. Pentagali V4, sexiest bike. This is number two. She's a nine. If there could only be one ten, she's a nine. Which is great because I'm like a six. I feel dumb because I am literally just looking at it because it's so freaking gorgeous. If anyone saw me, they'd be like, what's you looking at? I'm like, look at my bike, fool. You want to know the best angle of like, actually, in my opinion, any vehicle, car or bike is down 45 degrees off the butt like that. Best angle for any car, in my opinion. I can't get quite low enough, but right about basically there freaking the best thanks for watching i hope i see some of you guys in a couple weeks if not i hope i see you some other time thank you for watching appreciate you all hope you're doing well be good all right bye